Yeah, we blew our belt. Damn, that sucks. All right, so I was just running a print and the print head starts going haywire. I hear it kind of from across the room and it starts banging into the side. And then I noticed that obviously the print head was over there and the part at the time was right in the middle of the build plate. And this is actually what I was printing, this little window latch we're working on for a boat. You can see there's some artifacts. Clearly the head was not where it's supposed to be. You can see these two holes are misaligned that it was trying to print some layer to the right there. So it's going haywire, I rush over here, check it out. And the first thing I notice is this pile. It looks like magnetic dust. So I'm like, all right, well, what's the source of that? I kind of look up here, I'm like, oh, that does not look good. There's some like dust in there. So I immediately check this and sure enough, it's super loose. There's another pile of belt dust over here and that's coming off this belt because it was this one was a smidge loose, I guess, but just from a lot of traffic and high movement of the head as well as the bed. We're also getting a lot of, it's called scarring or just kind of what, but it's not enough to get the, a plastic razor blade underneath. It is enough to just look bad on the bed from what we've printed in the past. So there's just some issues I'm experiencing with heavy use. If you've had any of these issues, please let me know. But yeah, we'll get the belt. It's a real bummer, but we've been using this nonstop. So can't blame it. I just am an idiot and didn't tighten this in between prints, which sucks because I'm usually such a stickler. But after the first eight prints, I wasn't having any issues. They weren't coming loose at all. And so I just stopped checking it. So there's the remnants. That's an issue that I've had just ran into. Luckily, I got an any cubic Cobra Go up there on the top shelf that we're going to unbox. We got to get up and running with some FDM. So all right, let's get to fix this thing. So the rubber dry belt replacement is six millimeters in width and two millimeters in pitch. Here's the one I went ahead and ordered on Amazon. Comes with plenty, so you'll have extra to fix this in the future, potentially. This is the back of the print head where the belt actually connects and you just slide these out. After receiving these in the mail that I order on Amazon, these copper replacements, they only come with one. So just be mindful if you order that on Amazon, only one showed up to my house. So got to double check the quantity, but I ended up reusing the current ones because uh, I got impatient and wasn't able to wait for the shipment. Just don't clip your finger like that in the first one. All right, so on this right side tensioner, you do have two M3 heads uh, on these Allen machine screws here. So go ahead and take those out. And then on this tensioner, it's actually a little bit different than the smaller printers. The smaller printers, at least on the Cobra Go, the pulley inside slides out and is able to get out, just, you know, just pulling it out. This style, actually one of the four sides pops off and you'll see that shortly. It's a little bit out of frame, I apologize, but you'll see me pop off the side and then the pulley comes out sideways. So it's a slight difference uh, between a smaller format, any cubic printer and the larger, but that's how to get the pulley out of this right side tensioner. So I tried to just slide the print head off the gantry on the right side there, as you just saw, but I ended up just loosening the tensioner wheel on the bottom and then popping the upper left wheel off in this case. And it was enough, uh, you know, wiggle room to go ahead and pull the head off the rail. So that's why I got that off. Uh, if there's a better way to do it, feel free to drop a comment. I think that's probably the, the most simple. All right, when you get over to this side, there's two machine screws hiding kind of in the back here. I believe it's an M2 head, which all, oh, M2 and a half actually millimeter head on these machine screws. I was able to leave the bottom one in partially after loosening it and just sliding the cover back a little bit, you'll see. And that was enough to just pull the belt through and just making sure I wasn't, uh, you know, putting the belt over the pulley in any way or, or anything weird. So that was enough for me just leaving the second one in. It's a little bit of a pain to get back here since it's tight. So since the belt snapped, obviously I had to measure the belt in two different sections. It ends up being 48 inches. So if you just want a quick reference, 48 inches for the replacement belt.
All right, there you have it. The printer's totally fixed. We got the new belt on. Everything's working great. Here's just a quick snippet of actually getting it up and running. I'm doing the auto level. There is a slight nuance that I wanted to show here that's a, an issue when I got the printer that I was having. And so whenever I boot up the printer and just turn the power on, I wasn't getting any response to the screen. And actually, the little SD card holder uh, is full right now. And if I click the card that's in it and drop it out, the screen recognizes that something changed and it pop and pops back up. So I was actually rebooting the firmware when I first got in it, got it thinking that I couldn't turn the printer off because I'd have to reload the firmware every time. And then one day I just popped that chip out or popped the memory card out of the, the screen itself and it fired right up. So it's a little nuance. Um, just curious if anyone else has seen that, but it helped me. Here's the printer start ripping, and then I'll give you a little test print at the end here. Appreciate you watching. If you like the video, go ahead and drop a like. And uh, if you want to see more 3D printing videos, stay tuned. Thanks.